Hey, what's up guys? Buckskin Snuggie here with some quick tips for Neverwinter. Uh, the first thing I'd like to start off with is basically getting the companion that you can get for free. Well, essentially, all you have to do is link your gamer tag with the uh, with Arc Games. And then all you have to do is take a quick run over to the rewards claim agent. Uh, basically what I just showed on the mini-map there. Uh, you run over and you grab yourself the Renegade Illusionist. Um, it's really nice to know that essentially when you start off the game, even if you are running solo and you don't really have any buddies who play it, technically you don't have to be playing by yourself, you kind of do have a partner in crime. And he's actually a good little dude that really helps out. Um, I was surprised to see a lot of people, you know, with a lot of people who are playing this game, who are new to this game, are actually running around without a companion, and I really figured that this would be the first thing that I'd want to talk about. He's actually a pretty good guy, um, having a companion really helps out in this game. Um, but yeah, what I, I essentially didn't really know what to name my guy, so I just I called him Houdini. When I think of the word illusionist, I basically think of um, I think of Houdini. But yeah, like I said though, you should have been prompted when you started the game to uh, to link your Xbox Live account. If you haven't already, you could jump on their website and do it. But I, I would definitely recommend doing it in the first place. Yeah, take a quick look at him there. There he is, decked out in some gangster little robes. And yeah, you just basically have to equip him to your character, name him, and then through your companion menu there, you just press X and summon him. And sure enough, there he is doing the doing the gangster hustle with me. Okay, so the next tip I'd like to talk about is the bank. Uh, when you start off in this game, you essentially don't really get too many um, inventory slots. You get one little bag and it can only hold, hold so much. So a lot of people aren't really fully aware yet that there is a bank that you could go and store stuff in. Uh, I believe you get 16 slots that you could be storing up to 16 different items in. So there's the uh, shared bank account too. Uh, you could actually share items in between your your characters. You do actually get two characters in this game, so I, I would recommend using both of them and trying to get both of them at least up to level 16. I'll get into a little bit more on that later. But yeah, as you can see, you could basically store some of the stuff that you can't really use, you know, like. Uh, certain rune stones, enchantments, or whatnot, I would definitely recommend stashing that that treasure box that you could basically only open up when you reach certain levels. Uh, because I am the the guy who has the dungeoneering skill, any dungeoneering kits that I do have, I will share it with a different character who doesn't have that skill, because it would benefit him more than it would me, because I basically can do that for free. But yeah, the bank is really helpful in this game. Um, I would highly recommend for people to use it. Uh, at the bottom too, you look, you can basically share silver, gold, and whatnot in amongst your characters too, and that's really a big help. Uh, located right in the center part of the map. Just bust out your mini-map and make a quick waypoint to it. Okay, now once you reach level 10, you are going to get a quest uh, in regards to professions. This is something I would really recommend people doing right away. There's quite a few different professions Protection's that on. you can Good be, work. Um, basically pursuing with every single character much that you have, never but would. the one main one that I would really recommend going towards would Before be leadership. It's a good way for you to earn experience, uh, gold and silver, and astral diamonds. Definitely want to be raking in those astral diamonds, so the sooner you get this going the better basically you just run over talk to this lady it, it will show you where to go in regards to your, to your glowing quest little bar there um, but yeah so what you want to be doing is you just you press start you go over to professions under items there and like I said leadership is one of the easiest ones to go through uh, what it is is basically you just kinda assign jobs to a little guy you know the first thing you're gonna want to do is you have to recruit a mercenary for leadership and then you'll notice the first handful of them are really, really fast. You could you could rank up experience so you can get better missions and whatnot that you can do with your professions. 
Uh, I like I said too with the other ones, the other professions, they they do generate equipment and whatnot, but it, it takes a long time before you really start getting some really good equipment out of them. I haven't really done too much of them with my other character. I started doing some tailoring uh, just because I was the uh, I was the control wizard, and the tailoring is kind of the specialty for the control wizard. But I haven't really seen anything too beneficial from it whatsoever. Like, you got a couple of cool shirts and whatnot. I think I'm like level 3. But with leadership, though, it seems to be pretty fast. Uh, I'm, I've got mine up to, I believe, level 4. And, like, every two hours, I'm basically raking in about 400 astral diamonds. Uh, 200 from each. So you'll notice that you can unlock different options to basically be doing more tasks at the same time, right? So, if, you know, you reach level 30, you, you get to unlock another option where you could do a secondary task. Uh, if you get to level 3 on every any profession, you'll also get another slot. So I'm, I'm level 30 on one of my characters, and I have my leadership to level 3, so I'm doing three tasks at the same time. And yeah, it, I, I will definitely make a video in regards to just professions, but I, I would definitely recommend doing this the sooner the better, you know, play along with it, uh, just test around a little bit, and hopefully I'll get a video up as soon as possible. Okay, so another one is once you reach level 11, you're going to get a quest called Praying to the Protectors Gods. Unpaid, Basically what you are going to be doing is praying to the gods, and this is something that's really, really you recommended. You should go see Aralyn the Pice, so if you, an invoker, if you who pray to the gods, most of her time the gods by the altar here, the shrine of the gods. You, uh, she you can get advise Ardent you how to invoke the power of the gods. Coins, and you can get experience from doing this. You get a uh, sort of a blessing that will kind of benefit you while you're out in the battlefield fighting, you know, doing dungeons and whatnot. And you can also get astral diamonds from doing this. So I essentially talked to the wrong guy here Maybe in the moves, first place. So I sneak over oh, and I talk I to the person I'm supposed to be talking to, and then she hooks Hello. me up with the ability so, to invoke. So you want the to God. learn to invoke? Invoking, I'm guessing, in is just whenever you invoke, I'm you will receive. Sure, it's kind of vocabulary. But yeah, so I do a quick invoke here, and sure enough, if you take a look, I get 2,900 rough astral diamonds, and that's fantastic. You'll notice it says rough astral diamonds. If you go into your inventory and you go to riches, you basically scroll down over to your rough astral diamonds, you press A button, and you convert them all into normal astral diamonds. And astral diamonds is a great currency in this game. It's uh, basically hand in hand with Zen they're some of the most important currencies in the game and you could buy zen from from converting your uh, your astral diamonds so i would really recommend it and like i said you could do it uh basically once every hour and once a day from what i've noticed you can get an ardent coin and a celestial coin and those actually do have a value with them you can spend them to get some pretty neat shit uh, if you, what is it now, you got to go to the Vault of Piety, I believe it is, the Vault of you Piety. Well so uh, you'll the notice gods. with the Ardent Coins, you can have a max up to 500, so save as many of those as you can, but you'll notice with the Celestial Coins, it maxes out at 7. So once you save it up to about 7, then you just go into the menu here, scroll over to the store, scroll down to Vault of Piety. So this is what your Celestial Coins, or no, this is your Ardent Coins, pardon me, this is what you can buy with your Ardent Coins, you can see a handful of stuff that's not really too great, the Mark of Seals and stuff aren't really too enticing to me, but if you scroll down to the bottom for some of the more expensive ones here, you start looking at some pretty cool shit, like that horse looks pretty badass, and that angel would be a pretty nice companion to be busting some shit up. Um, but yeah, if we scroll over to the right here and look at the Celestial Synergy, the first couple are pretty lame in my opinion. Elixir of Fate, not really too sure what that does. Party Poppers, no thanks. But the uh, the Coffer of Wondrous Augmentation. Now I've heard there's some pretty good shit in there. And as you can see here, I was pretty pumped up after my first enchantment of getting uh, 2,900 astral, rough astral diamonds. So I'm kind of doing my invoking shuffle right now.
kind of appeasing the gods, I guess, for my next invocation. <laughs> I would recommend doing it. You know, everyone loves to bust out a good shuffle every once in a while. Hopefully getting some good luck going on with that next invocation. But I also, um, I, I wanted to show here a couple of other invocations. So you essentially don't always get over 2,000, you know what I mean? It's kind of random. You can get experience from this. You can get... Uh, you can get different potions and whatnot. As you can see right here, I ended up getting 500 experience points, uh, 330 rough astral diamonds. So it, it, it's going to fluctuate. It's not always going to be the same. Here I do it again. I get 500 uh, minor potion of force and 710 experience. So, you know, every hour that could really, really stack up, you know, and that's another reason why you're going to want to be having different players, like, you do get two player slots in the game, so try to jump back and forth, you know, try to get those those professions to be working for you, because some of them take, like, four hours and whatnot, so you're going to want to be juggling them as much as you can. Okay, so a quick tip in regards to the minimap here, if you hold the left bumper and press up on the D-pad, basically it brings up your minimap. Now if you press the next pane button, which for a lot of old school gamers is the select button, it'll actually jump you into the minimap itself. And you can take a quick look around, zoom out, zoom in, whatnot. Um, but the one feature that I really like is the waypoints. Okay, so you can basically press A on anything, set a waypoint anywhere and it will change your sparkly little path, your guide path, basically to wherever you want to go instead of where you should be going in regards to quests and whatnot. So say essentially I wanted to head over to the nearest mailbox, okay, well I would just take a quick look over here and just follow the path as it goes. And it basically will bypass any quests or any destinations that you're supposed to go to which kind of really helps out. So if we just quickly follow the path, and sure enough, of course I took something that's a little bit distance away so it's just dragging out right now, but hey, sure enough, here we are, here is the mailbox. And then quickly just press the left bumper up on the d-pad, jump back into the pane now, and there you go. Press A twice to basically take it off, and now it essentially goes back to the quest that you're supposed to be onto right now. And okay, if we take a quick look in the quests, um, you can go to the queues and, whoops, not the queues, sorry, the journal, and that basically will list the quests that you have essentially right now. And if you look at the numbers, it'll be level 14 to 17 is what I've got right now set up for me. Um, I'm actually designated to go to a level 16 quest right now. Um, I preferably try to go for the lower level quests, you know, so just click A button, go to draw quest path, and essentially it will change now where I'm supposed to go and I prefer doing that more or less just because you know you you want to be going to a quest that's more lower level so it should be a lot easier for you to complete take a quick look here it basically changes where I'm going so don't ever be shy to take a quick look and see what order of quests you have going on that will kind of really help you out Okay, so once you reach about level 15, you'll get a special quest called Visit the Auction House. Just come over here, talk to her once, or him, sorry, not too sure if that's a guy or a girl. <laughs> uh, take a quick look, basically, boom, you just talk to him, the thing's done. And then, um, a lot of people don't understand that you can actually access the Auction House from anywhere you want. You basically press start, and you just sneak over to the store, I believe? No, it's under items. You go to the Tarlamu Tarmaloon Trade House. And then essentially, you know, you could browse for different equipment. You know, you could put stuff up for, for sale on the auction house there. And then you could check the bids that you have. Um, essentially, I don't really have anything up right now because this is a new character and pretty low on the Astral Diamonds. Okay, so when you turn level 16, you're going to get a quest called a Companion. Basically, you run over to this place on the minimap here. It's just the one I'm looking at right here. Uh, your quest guide will basically tell you just follow the sparkly little path. Uh, you can run over here though, and essentially you get a normal companion at level 16. So we're just going to take a quick run over here and talk to this gentleman over here, basically in regards to a companion. Um, try to pick a companion that suits your playstyle. So if you're if you're, if you're like a scour, scourge wizard or a uh, 
then you've come to the right place, my or friend. Or a freaking control wizard, you? you know, try to try to get something a little more aggressive. Um, I, I would basically choose like a man at arms, you know, if you're if you're one of the wizard guys, if you're uh, if you're the greater fighter or the for the other tank guy, basically, I would go for maybe an apprentice healer. An apprentice healer is really good if you're running into dungeons and whatnot, and you know you're getting beat up pretty bad. Because later on, high in the dungeons in the higher levels, your man at arms and your wayward wizard and your dog and whatnot—they're really going to get beat up really bad. Because the guys that you're going to be facing are really, really tough. So having that healer is really beneficial. And because it is your second companion, because you should have grabbed the first companion, like I told you earlier on in the video, it should have been the first thing that you did. Um, you could switch back and forth in between companions so what I'm gonna be basically doing is I'm gonna be choosing the apprentice healer so say I'm getting beat up into a fight and you know I'm barely hanging by a thread and I don't have any any health points whatsoever basically what I'm gonna be doing is I would uh, switch companions uh, let's just name this one right here we'll call Okay, so essentially we're gonna call her Naomi, mainly because the name backwards is Imon, and I always get a kick out of that. <laughs> so we'll just slap that into the enter the value here. Now, if we take a quick look at our companions, like I was saying, you could basically switch them out. See, this companion right here, the experience on it is actually level nine. It's over in the top right-hand corner a bit there. Uh, my Houdini guy is essentially right now rank six. So what I'm gonna want to do is press Y button, go to companion options and basically begin training. So now what it says at the bottom there is it's going to take 36 minutes to train him. If if I could with the Astral Diamonds, I would essentially spend 2,433 diamonds to train him this instant. So basically it would not take 36 minutes. I would highly recommend saving your Astral Diamonds. Do not even waste it whatsoever. 36 minutes to save yourself 2,400 Astral Diamonds? Yeah, sign me up for that. So just press A button there. Now you'll see essentially he's gone because he's in training. We can't exactly use him right now. So what we're going to do is go back to companions and then switch over to Naomi here. And then now we're going to press X button to summon her. And you. now she's going to be at basically at my side helping me out. So essentially you could swap through companions whenever you want. You know what I mean? And like I was saying, when you get to the higher dungeons... Having the healer is really going to help you out because you are going to be fighting really tough guys and your your aggressive companions are going to get beat up really bad and they will essentially die on you a lot. But if you have a healer who kind of hides in the back and keeps you alive while you're shitting on kids, it will really, really help you out. So that's basically it for companions. Um, if you take a quick look here too within your companions... You can um, basically throw enchantments and uh, oh, this one. Okay, sorry, it's a rune stone, and it's a defensive slot, so you'll get the defensive bonus for a, for a rune stone. Um, I can also slap on a, um, an, a what is it? An amulet, so that's also helpful towards her stats. Um, once you get higher levels from training them, they will be able to unlock more stuff. See at level 10 I get a defensive slot and level 15 I basically get a, a ring option. And then you'll notice too when you get higher up on the levels for your companions you could basically choose what they look like. If you just kind of highlight it for a bit I believe it should tell you how what level it is. Oh, okay so apparently not but yeah you will notice eventually you will get them unlocked. I believe it's about level 10 is when the acolyte might be unlocked. I'm not really too sure don't quote me on that. But yeah companions are very very handy in this game. Me I per personally play solo quite a bit um, but essentially I'm not solo because I do have the companions really helping me out. But like I said if you can you know try try to get a companion that suits your playstyle. So guys, basically that's as much tips as I have right now as it stands. Um, if I do come across anything else, you know, I guarantee I will definitely put up more videos and whatnot. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you guys can, please, you know, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button to show some support. Hopefully soon enough I will be able to come up with a video on how to farm uh, Astral Diamonds because I know everyone really wants those. And in regards to converting them to Zen because Zen is pretty important in this game and honestly with this game what I've noticed so far is you do not have to drop any money into this game whatsoever you could basically be earning astral diamonds and converting them um, but yeah I will basically be sitting here doing my invoking shuffle and I hope you guys enjoy the video
thanks again for watching guys. Good luck in the battles.